Bienvenidos, bienvenidas. This has been the most exciting weekend in net politics in North America for the last century. So exciting, and we're going to talk about it today. But first, this is Latina Literati. hundred years since Mexico gained its independence from Spain, men have served as the presidents of Mexico. But this weekend, Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum has been elected the first female president of any nation in North America. Mexico has again made history in electing the first woman to serve as president. Amazing, amazing story, and uh, it's a fascinating, fascinating to take a look at the process and also at the incoming president, Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum. Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum and her Morena party have made history. 98 million voters are said to be participating or to have participated in this uh, presidential campaign in Mexico of the 1.4 million eligible voters huge turnout everywhere, even in the United States, because Mexico, like the United States, allows its uh, citizens living in other countries to participate in the electoral process. And so thousands of people waited in line on Sunday at different places in Texas and other states where there are large Mexican populations to participate in this historic vote. But who is La Presidenta? Who is Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum? Well, born and raised in Mexico, she is also the most educated president in North America. She has a doctorate. She's a physicist by training. Fascinating because her mother was a biochemist. And so she was raised in a very political household. Both her parents were active in the 1968 student uh, uprisings in Mexico. So in the United States, you had the Kent State Massacre. But in Mexico, you also have student right, riots uh, and you have a crackdown by the state and students were killed and uh, taken to prison as well. So in both countries, you had these students asking for, for example, in Mexico, not to have their tuition raised, to have more social justice on campus and to allow the students their rights to express themselves. And so both in the United States at Kent State and then also in Mexico City, there were uh, huge crackdowns on the students and her parents were there. Her, as I said, her, her mother was a teacher, biochemist, and she was, you know, says, you know, six years old. She was present, very aware of it. And from the time she was 15, she started attending organizations that represented mothers whose children had been uh, taken by the government for political reasons. So fascinating a woman. So obviously raised in a very political household, raised by a strong woman who was also a scientist. So she definitely had a role model. Her mother, of course, supported her as she was going through her process of preparing. She used to help take care of the kids uh, after they both uh, gave their classes. And so, again, nobody does it alone. And we all need those around us who are giving us that unconditional support as we prepare in our careers. And so she did that. And she actually lived four years here in California. Uh, she got her doctorate. She was involved with uh, Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in Berkeley, Livermore actually, and she also is a climate scientist. So fascinating. It'll be interesting to see how does that translate to the policies that Mexico will see in the next six years. So the Mexican Constitution allows presidential candidates to serve one term for six years. And so Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum will be taking office on October 1st. It'll be very interesting to see. Uh, she has pledged to continue her party Morena's what they call tremendous uh, reform, offering a social safety net to the poor, pensions to the elderly. Uh, she has said to commit to greater help for students, um, again, for mothers. And as we all know, throughout North America, throughout the world, uh, far too many women perish at the hands of people they know. And so the femicides that occur in Mexico, they occur everywhere, but uh, hopefully she'll be able to address that as well, knowing full well what it means uh, when children lose their mother or when women are attacked um, and disappeared. 
So interesting to look forward to. There's a lot to take a look at as she takes office and her programs start to unfold. Dr. Claudia Scheinbaum's political career begins when she serves in other mayoral administrations and eventually she is elected mayor of Mexico City and then she is environmental minister under uh, Lopez Obrador uh, when he was mayor. Now she is his uh, successor. So interesting. Of course, as a climate scientist, as a physicist, she is known to be very disciplined. She actually had three times the number of rallies that her opponents had. And so she, just with a lot of discipline, very dedicated, very analytical, she would not be goaded. Uh, there were a lot of attacks on her and her family, and she just simply would not be goaded. She just stuck with the issues and focused on what she knows that the people, the vast majority of, of Mexicans want. They want personal security, like we all do, access to education, to opportunities, to decent living. And so these are the things that she has said she is committed to continuing, to construct that reformation, the change that is needed for una vida digna, a life of dignity. We should all have the right, and we do have the right, to a life in dignity. She has said that she did not arrive at the presidency alone, that she stands on the shoulders of her heroines, of her ancestors, and of course she stands with all mothers, grandmothers, daughters, sisters, and all women stand with her as she takes the presidency of the Republic of Mexico, October 1st. She is the mother of two children, and uh, both, and also a grandmother, so it'll be very interesting as uh, the platform that she holds, she starts to execute the programs to see what she does and what she can address because we all know that there are a lot of issues in uh, Mexico that need to be addressed and uh, violence is a big one. The importation of arms from the United States is huge because that's what's used by those who would break the law in Mexico, the guns produced in the United States. There are a lot of challenges. Uh, Mexico has a lot of natural resources and how are those translated then to benefit the people of Mexico? So it'll be interesting, interesting to see. So thank you um, for joining us. Uh, I'm just going to give you one final quote from Dr. Claudia Scheinberg. She says, the greatest use of power is in service to the neediest of our community. And so that'll be really interesting to see what she does with her ideas and the platform that she's putting forward. And now on to my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. In the description box, I will leave a link to a documentary about her life because I think it's important to take a look at it if this is a subject of interest. Uh, and the book that I'm going to recommend is on her. It's by Mary Fraser. writes a book about Claudia Scheinbaum becoming the first female president of Mexico. And so she delves in more into her background, into the process, how she gets where she is today, and the importance of what it means to have the first female uh, leading a country like Mexico. So please uh, check your local library and your local bookstores for books that may interest you on this topic. And of course, we'll link below the link so that you can uh, acquire this book if, you're, if it's of interest to you. Thank you so much for joining us on this video. And uh, we would love you to subscribe to Latina Literati and let us know what do you want us to talk about? What do you want us to share with you? Uh, what are you reading this summer? We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Con mucho salud, mucho cariño, mucho amor. Gracias.